What? You guys still have questions? All right then. writes to me and says thanks for the very informative videos love the lifestyle no BS living minimalist is the way to go these shallow souls trying to keep up with the Joneses can have their large mortgages I did have a question what did you think about a 1996 Winnebago Volkswagen Rialta Class B I'm considering one for 19 K I don't have the money for an Explorer right now thanks well uh, actually they're pretty awesome I like them uh, personally my own preference is I prefer much bigger engines. I like the big American V8s. I like to, to have more power and uh, don't even get me started with German parts and having to fix those things. But that being said, uh, those are very nice class Bs. I would I would say uh, you're probably, depending on how tall you are, you, you might want to put a skylight on the roof to stand up. There's only a couple little spots where you can stand up in those things. They're not that tall, but they're not bad. And for 19K, if you really look, you'll find an Explorer for 19K. It might not be a wide body one from this era, but uh, you might find one like this. It just might need some work, but um, yeah, keep, keep your eyes open. Um, Nomadic Assyrian Elvis Van Dweller. Hey Justin, I made a vid. Can you please help me with my questions on this matter of my genset and solar? My RV tech guy found a guy who's going to work on my rig on my property. He said the gen starts of the house battery. I think he mean charges the house battery. So what you're saying is that battery charger has to be hooked up to 110 and if you run your gen set that will charge the house battery. If that's the case then what's the need for solar panels? Well I think the ultimate goal here to be off grid is to not be dependent on a generator and not have to use one. In fact my ultimate goal is to remove my generator completely and replace it with battery banks. The solar and the batteries, I mean I almost never have to use a generator as it is except to occasionally in the middle of the night. My laptop's dead, I need to charge up my laptop. I could run it off my inverter, but I only, I'm only using one house battery right now. I'm gonna upgrade that system though. Once I have a couple more batteries in here, I don't think I'll really ever need the uh, generator. And my goal is to get rid of it, toss it, sell it or whatever, and replace the compartment uh, with a battery bank. So, I mean, you, you can't really stealth camp either. If you're gonna be in the cities, you don't wanna park in front of, in front of someone's house and run your generator, right? Uh, Dave Coelho, have you ever been asleep and someone pounds on your door saying you can't park here? Do you tell them off or just move? <laughs> well, I, I mean that to me is a non-issue. If someone comes up to my door and bangs on it and says I can't park here, I will step outside and politely take a look and say, sorry man, there's no sign that says I can't park here and this is a city, uh, a city street and it's taxpayer paid and I paid for it. I pay my road taxes, my insurance, my gas, that all pays for these roads so I have a right to be here. So unless there's a sign saying that I've exceeded my time limit or something like that, you can fuck off. Um, Golf for Fishing says, I can't find a used Explorer. What's the next best reliable, same size or a bit bigger, full wash from Class B? Well, not big, bigger. Remember, when it comes to Class Bs, they're van conversions. Anything that's cut off behind the front doors and has a box on the back, that's not a Class B, that's a Class C. Sometimes they call them Class B pluses, but they're not Class Bs. A van conversion is a Class B. That means it's got pretty much all the van body all the way to the back, usually even the back doors. Explorer is a little bit bigger than almost all Class Bs out there because it has the fiberglass cap on the back and it's extended an extra two feet. So if you want bigger, this is about the biggest you can get. If you get any bigger than this, you're getting into Class B+, plus, which is just, again, a Class C without a big overhead bed on the, on the top. Um, but anyways, if I wasn't gonna get an Explorer because they're so rare and they're hard to find, I would buy a Pleasureway wide body. Somewhere between 95 and 2001, 2002. Best years, I think. Um, and I almost bought a, a Pleasureway. It was the same year as this, actually. It was 98. 98 and uh, I was a couple of days away from getting it before I found this deal and I ended up getting the Explorer. But the Pleasure Ways are very, very well built and really nice rigs. So take a look at those. Um, next, the Darwich says, RV question, in your experience, is the black water tank always on the driver's side? If not, does it make it a hassle if it's not? 
Yeah, it's pretty much on all motorhomes I've ever had. It's always been on the driver's side. Um, I don't really think it would make much of a difference, but it's usually on the side the washroom's at, right? And the washroom's over here. So I, I don't see how that is relevant. It's like having a gas tank on one side or the other. You just drive in the other way and dump your tanks, I guess. All right, that's about it for this edition, guys. So pop your questions below. And if you've got some good RV related questions I haven't gone over, I would be happy to answer them on the next video. Stay tuned, got some exciting news. Lots more mods going on in here, including my new carpet and some other things I'm not gonna tell you about just yet. Some, some big upgrades coming though uh, for this spring. Also, uh, there will be a very uh, exciting announcement from our good friend Jody Peterson coming up on this channel soon. So stay tuned. Keep on rocking in the free world, everyone. Hey, so what do you think of Van Life? Van Life's fucking awesome. Star from boxes for the ozone. Got a man of the people says keep alive.